In this tutorial, we'll take the foliage realism to the next level by adding character interaction. This system works with both Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5 and can be used to make foliage react dynamically to players or objects in the world. As always, you can download the project for free from the link in the description below to get started right away. If you want to see how the foliage was created, you can check out the earlier tutorials in the series. However, this tutorial is designed to stand on its own, so you can follow along even without watching those. Let's just, just jump in and start building. Now, in order for us to further enhance our plants and our foliage, we would like to have some interactability. interactability sorry. Um, and for us to do that, we are going to do it for the material shader because it's the cheapest way to achieve this. Okay, so once we go to our material shader, which we've used in the past in order to get our wind and our shader going and so on, I'm just going to make sure that, uh, you know, people are aware that this is obviously, this is the wind portion, and this is going to be the actual shader material. And over in here in the world position offset, we will be using our particular method in order to get the foliage to respond to collisions. So for us to do that, we are going to use a few basic nodes. First one being distance to nearest surface, okay? And we're going to then subtract a radius. So we're going to promote this to over to a parameter. We're going to call this radius, okay? And we're going to connect the this particular node to the A value, and we're going to keep the radius to the B value. Then we're going to invert this. So we want to this to go outwards, not inwards, okay? And we're also going to saturate it. And then this saturation will go into a multiply, at which point we will be calculating the di distance field. Uh, give me one second. Right, distance field uh, gradient, which is down here, like this, right? And we're going to plug this over into the A value, and this is into the B value. And this would be the right time for me to tell you that you do need to go into your project settings and make sure that in here, if you type in distance field, you have to ensure that the generate mesh distance fields is enabled. This is enabled by default in Unreal Engine 5, but in Unreal Engine 4, you will have to enable it manually. Uh, once you do that, then you'll know that your shader will be able to read this information and use it. Uh, the next thing we want to do after this multiply is add another one, and we can connect the first one to the input of 8 value. And now we want to decide the strength of this, and we're going to call this strength, this parameter. We're going to give it a, de a default value of 2000, and we're going to plug it over into the B value. Uh, then we're going to add a add node, like that, and we're going to look for the vertex normal um, world space, and we're going to put that into the A value, and this multiply into the B value. Now we want to clamp this particular setup, and we want to clamp it between minus 20 and 0. And this, in theory, should be all that we need for our materials, to our foliage to react to any collisions. So for any object, it doesn't have to be a collision or an object with a collision. It just has to be something that's, a, you know, a material, you know, basically a, a sphere, a cube, whatever, right? Now, what we want to do, because we have the world position offset taken already by the wind, we want to add an add node, put our wind over into the B value, and our clamp over into the A value. And this will then go into the world position offset. Then we can click apply. And we're going to go back to our particular, you know, setup in here. I'm going to make sure that I save it as well. And over in the scene, I am going to add a sphere. Okay, just a normal sphere. And when I bring the sphere over to the meshes, you'll notice that the meshes are going to, sorry, the foliage is going to be affected by this. Now, this is going to, they're going to be affected by this mesh depending on the setup that we've done, you know, depending on the um, uh, material instance. So if we go into the material instance in our uh, plants, you know, the material instance that we created before in the tutorial, we will then be able to look at, um, you know, the strength and the radius and so on. Now, the radius currently is set to zero and the strength of 2000. I do, I can set this radius to maybe like a 20 or something like that. And already this is going to help a lot, right? With the with this uh, particular mesh and how it's deforming. So as you can see, as we approach it, it's 
try you know it's doing its very damn best to push these meshes aside right so that's pretty cool now the radius can be decreased if you'd like but i wouldn't recommend it i would recommend leaving it to a value of 20. now the clamp that we've set up in here like as well we can actually add uh, variations to this so we can just uh, you know promote the parameter and this is the min and we can promote this to parameter and this will be the max okay now the min as i said i'm going to put this to minus 20 by default and i'm going to apply and now if we go over into uh you know back in here we're actually able to change these as well so for example by changing these settings you can get the meshes to be a bit closer not as far away so maybe a minus 10 would make more sense than a minus 20 or many maybe a minus 5 or something like that so now when you move the sphere in there it still it, you know it doesn't push these as much but you will get a bit of effect you know you will get some glitches in there so the more you push away the more the effect will look you know more accurate so to speak but i can understand why you might not like it you know it's it's still a, it's a distortion of the of these um you know of, of these plants as the as the sphere is getting near it you can see there just how it sort of like creates a a bit of an effect right just like that so you're gonna have to tow you're gonna have to tune the settings until you get the right um uh, the right amount but you know don't be surprised if they're not looking as good as you might intend this is meant for performance as well so it's not exactly ideal right it, as I said, it's just about performance now once we do that we are now able to you know control over this with a mesh but what about our character because if we play around the level right now we won't be able to affect this in any particular way you can also see that the wind is still working on this by the way i also wanted to mention that all my projects including the world uh, forge project featuring my foliage system are available on patreon on top of that there's a variety of other exciting projects like space scenes black holes planets and so much more these projects are all accessible to my patreon subscribers so if you're interested in diving deeper into my work and supporting the channel i'd love for you to take a look you can find the link in the description below thank you for your support and let's keep creating together so i'm just going to move this away this particular wall and this wall and this wall right and now i'm able to press play and get near with my character but nothing happens as i get near and also this plant here by the way the one that's dropped manually uh, this one is got collisions enabled so we will have to disable those in order for us to be able to walk all over it right we you know i know this plant is probably not going to be very happy about that but we will walk all over it <laughs> right now in order for us to fix this very very quickly and allow for our character to deform this um this is going to be quite simple we're going to go into our character blueprint so this is going to be the third person blueprint gonna double click the actual character blueprint and in here we can add a i'm going to type in cylinder right and i'm gonna go over to the viewport just so i can see the cylinder and i want this cylinder to kind of be this low and probably we will want it to be a 0 0.5 perhaps on these two axes so we want to keep it tall right we don't want to keep it too uh too uh thick right like that now the the problem with the cylinder is that it's using a material that is visible so we are going to have to generate a new material so m mask and then over in here material in here we're going to change from an opaque to a masked material and we're going to put the mask value to zero like that uh, once we do that the material is now invisible meaning that this material can be used on this cylinder in here and the cylinder will become invisible now when we play the level the character will have a cylinder right there and as we move you can see that we're deforming the uh the, the plants okay so this is the effect that we were looking for and if i you know for example if i go around and uh, i don't know start painting a, a lot of them right so maybe something like that you know i'll just add in here hopefully uh they'll show up <laughs> for some reason they're not showing up let me just try and decrease that yeah i'm not really sure what the hell is going on let's just put them to a one i don't know why these plants are not showing up is it because i've reached the limit or something 
Oh no, they, they are apparently all in here. I just can't see them. This is so weird. Yeah, apparently there's a lot of plants in here, but I... Oh, there we go. This, this is a bug or something. I'm not sure what's going on, but yeah, there's clearly... There's clearly a bug in here. With all nanite support has now helped me to put as many of these as possible, as I was probably hitting a cap. Right, so we have a lot of flowers in here, a lot of plants and stuff. And as you can see, as I'm walking around, my character is now affecting them. Now, again, you will need to change your settings depending on your needs, because right now it's sometimes it's just sort of like doing it a bit too much. This is why this eff effective, uh, you know, this technique is a lot more effective if you're using it for grass and not for things like this. But, you know, it can still work and it will still give you a decent enough result when your character is getting too too close. Now, to have a bit of fun, you can just, you know, ch ch take things like this, you know, like this sphere, right? So we're just going to bring it up here, uh, multiply it a little bit, maybe a few times like that. And with all these three spheres selected, we can actually enable physics. So just type in here, well, just find in here where it says uh, physics, simulate physics, just tick the box. And you can also go over into the landscape very quickly and maybe, you know, create a bit of a, some, you know, some, some, some interest, I guess, some increases in the terrain, some decreases and so on. And now when you press play, you will notice that the spheres fall around and they start crashing down with this foliage, and it's sort of like affecting it, give or take, here and there, um, depending on however however many, ra you know, whatever the radius is that you've set up, and as you can see, it will affect the foliage. So this just gives it a bit more of an oomph within the scene, and it will help you to make your scene a lot more, you know, more belie believable, and it's very cheap. That's the whole point. The whole idea here that this effect is very cheap to achieve just for the material shader rather than using complex techniques with collisions and bones and other such things. Thanks for watching. Now that you've added character interaction, your foliage is not only visually dynamic but also responsive to gameplay. Remember, the project file is available for free in the description below, so feel free to download it and experiment further. If you haven't already, check out the earlier videos in the series for more in-depth workflows, like how the foliage was created or how to add realistic wind effects. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the tutorial notification, uh, hit the, sorry, the notification bell for more tutorials like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.